Hello there everyone and welcome back to this battle series focusing on the Swedish period of the 30 years war. Now I should say, because I get a lot of it, what is the mod, where can I get it and so on. This mod is called 1648 and where you can find it, well hopefully I might have put a link in in the not the description but in the playlist because then I don't have to copy and paste it into every single video I make um, and if not Google uh, medieval 2 1648 mod which you know surprisingly most of the time I put the, the mod name in in the title in this I don't but most of the time I do, and still people seem to sort of, Hey, wait a minute, can't Lord John just Google this for me? Anyways, <laughs> disregarding that rant, what battle are we looking at then? Well, you might notice the fog. Yes, we're at Lützen. Well, might not be obvious, but for any Swede, I do think the, the fog at Lützen is iconic. Um, and so the year is 1632 and it's the 6th of Nove November, I believe. And uh, Wallenstein and Gustav Adolphus come head to head in what m what is one of the larger battles of the, um, the Thirty Years' War. And we got the town of Lützen over here on the left. And uh, yeah, let's take a look at the Swedish army since we're looking over here. So we've got basically the two um, two formations here. We got the yellow brigade, which is this one over here, and then we have the blue brigade over here. I believe they had three brigades, um, and then their their, the brigades are flanked on either side by cavalry but because limitations um, in troop numbers you can only have 20 units so um, that's why it's it looks like this and uh, we've uh, I positioned the men into the historical battle lines of the Swedish army in this triangular form of the brigade so we're looking at the yellow brigade here and the yellow brigade has musketeers on the side and on the front and to protect them from cavalry we've got pikemen here um, in the center and they're flanked by cavalry and so the battle is off um, and we got similar over here note that um, I've got lighter cannons here which can be quickly moved up and uh, fire on the enemy with close support of the the uh, brigades here. Yellow brigade started to move. Blue brigade will soon follow. A uh, bit of Scottish mercenaries here. Uh, it's part of the blue brigade. And we got some heavier cannons in the center. We got the king right here. We got cavalry over there. And now we're moving off to face the Catholics under Wallenstein on this side of the map which is set up. Um, we've got some uh, Hajduk regiment over here. We got some larger cannons of the uh, of the Catholics. We've got cavalry. We've got more cannons and here we can see the Catholic formation uh, which sort of has this zigzag pattern with gunners in front uh, supported by pikes in the back and then they have uh, Croat cavalry on their flank here on the left which did very well during this battle and they did very well in this mod as well we'll talk a little bit about that later on so historically uh, they start off very early in the morning or quite early in the morning um, although there was a heavy fog plus you would imagine the, the smoke that was going to be uh, um, that was going to be put forth by all the cannons and all the muskets. So it was very hard to see anything for most of the the uh, the time here. But it looks as though we might get into actual combat. So I'm quickly going to explain what happened in the historical battle. 
the brigade, the Swedish brigade, adva they're advanced up um, to this road, and they started to engage the Catholics um, on uh, um, right here, sort of at the road, and they managed to push. Well, throughout the battle, they managed to push um, back and forth across this road um, quite a few times. And then we had the cavalry going in on the flanks. The main point is about the historical uh, facts of the king, the Swedish king, dying. Also, you had uh, one of the major generals on the Catholic side dying as well. Uh, Papa Neymar, I believe, died at this battle. Uh, I'm moving up my cannons to sort of lead the attack or the heavy cannons, see if I can get some shots off. Um, as the Swedish brigade advanced, um, two things happened. Um, because of heavy attack here on the, our left, the Swedes sort of fell back a bit to take cover by, gra by the ground and also the fact that we got the town here uh, there was probably buildings and stuff that they could take cover which sort of pushed them further left and then by uh, heavy cavalry engagement that turned up here because they uh, added up an extra 2,000 cavalrists that turned up I believe uh, or am I remembering another battle anyways there was very heavy fighting here which led the the right side to tip more to the right which left a gap in the center, which Wallenstein um, exploited by sending cavalry through, which proved devastating for the Swedes, and a lot of men de died. And that is where the king saw, he saw that this problem was occurring, and he moved in, took charge personally, and as he did that, um, moving the men around, in the confusion there, he was uh, killed. So the battle has started. We can see uh, that the uh, Piccolomini Cuasier are moving up. And uh, they're about to move up, fire and then retreat. But they're facing heavy fire from the Swedes. And they actually break before they get close and they're forced off. I'm not sure if I'm firing round shot, but these cannons have the ability to fire canister as well, which is part of the mod. Uh, same time we got cavalry moving up here, uh, but for now the brigades are holding. Let's see, the cavalry might start to engage soon here on the right. And so, uh, I think, oh yeah, I've lost this. Uh, one of the problem was the cannons were moving up too fast, and so they took the brunt of the attack in the beginning, um, and this crew has been completely shot to pieces. These guys here firing. Oh, they're actually moving up. I thought they were sort of doing fire by rank and moving back and forth. The yellow brigade is pushing up since we managed to push away the enemy cavalry. Quite a bit of cannon shot going down. The Catholic formations are moving up. But they're taking casualties and they are getting hit quite a bit throughout here. As the regiments move up. And we have moved up the cavalry. And they're now skirmishing with the Croat cavalry. Which uh, doesn't look to be going very well for the Swedes. The Croats are winning this battle, I believe. Or it's just the fact that the Swedes are outnumbered in the position here. Yeah, it seems as though they're, they're losing more than the Croat. And they're falling back now. But they're, they're making an orderly retreat, and I'm going to return with the, the second regiment there. Oh, actually, it looks as though the Croats, inspired by the victory here, is going to charge. At the same time, I wield the Yellow Brigade to face more inwards here, since we've uh, 
sort of pushed the enemy away from the flanks. At the same time, the Blue Brigade is moving up and now the cavalry engagement is at foot here on the uh, on the right. Now the Croat um, in the in the historical battle actually managed to push through and push pushed all the way back to the Swedish camp, but they were pushed away from there, so they they made it quite a bit through the Swedish lines, and they're doing really well in this here fight as well, and that's why I've mobilized the king to uh, come in and aid here. He's going to move around and then he's going to start to fire with his pistol, pistols, I should say, since the old unit uses pistols. And they're going to fire from the back here. And uh, since the commander, or the guy playing for the um, the Imperial Austrians, the Habsburgs, um, is off looking at something else, um, I'm able to just sort of barely win this battle over here just by the aid of the king. Um, at the same time we can see the battle formations moving up. The yellow brigade is gaining more and more ground and we've got some fighting here. I believe it's, yes, Papa Namers Krasius have turned up. Um, I think historically they turned up on the, the right. But here they've turned up on the left. Very nice looking here, very imposing units with this black armor against the uh, these uh, Newland Travers to his county, uh, which are Finnish cavalry, as you can see here by the Finnish lion on the uh, the flag here that is fighting. But they'll soon probably get some support by the Yellow Brigade and the Musketeers from the Yellow Brigade. Ah, it looks as though the, the uh, Catholics are moving out their pikemen. And we're gonna have some a bit of a pike off, as it were. No! They're capturing our guns! The gun crews stand no chance against the master pike of the uh, Catholic force here. They have ended up in quite the difficulty though. They're sort of flanking this unit. So I'm not sure how it's gonna go over here. Seems as though they're alone in their advance here on the on the on our left. We can go over and see maybe some Catholics. Yes, we've got some moving up here. And we have some moving up here to uh, fight each other and um, we've got some pike struggle in the center here it's hard to tell who's winning this one at the same time we have won the fight on the right but barely and the king together with the survivors are now pushing around um, pushing around. I'm not sure. We might be pushing into the enemy general pretty darn soon. At this point the enemy commander laid heavy emphasis on actually killing the king. Um, but he's going to actually survive throughout the battle. Uh, which most likely is going to help me a lot. Now I tried to keep the formations as much as possible and not break them but I realized that I had to and also there weren't that that much um, resistance so that I could actually mobilize and, and redeploy uh, my troops. It looks as though there are no Catholic reserves left and the remaining units are this cannon unit over here, we got this regiment of foot over here, we got another one over there. We got some skirmishers that have tangled. And there goes the enemy general. So we'll take that as Wallenstein, rather, no, not Wallenstein, we'll take that as um, Papenheim rather than uh, Wallenstein. 
think where do we have the there we have the king the king is still alive and he's riding with his bodyguard and passing by the cannons over here cannon shot actually our own cannon shots land over there could be dangerous for the king to ride like that but it looks as though the enemy has been completely routed at this point the battle it went pretty fast um, and I might have wanted to have <laughs> had a longer battle so I could talk a bit about some more anecdotes here and there and stuff about more information about what, what sort of went down as the king died um, but hopefully I sp maybe sparked some interest in the battle and you can find it out for yourself um, which is uh, partly the reason for the battle series, but also a fact that uh, uh, it's sort of it, it, it brings an extra thing to a total war battle, doesn't it? If you can sort of uh, link it to a actual battle in some way. Uh, now, as I always say, the battles aren't uh, supposed to recreate the battle but it is recreating the conditions of battle and then fighting is as we please um, now the now I won and I won a pretty good battle but the actual battle would have to be considered a terrific victory for Sweden since so many men were killed and there weren't a decisive blow against the Catholic forces, especially since the king died, um, which hurt the uh, Protestant cause quite a lot. Um, and here we can see the casualty rates, the men remaining 255 on the Habsburg side, or the Catholic side, and 1200 on the Swedish side. We deployed roughly the same amount of men. Enemies killed uh, to enemies lost. So I guess a few recovered here. I'm not entirely sure if they recover in multiplayer. Uh, but you can see that there was a ban. You can sort of tell by doing the math of enemies killed to get to versus the men lost to sort of calculate friendly fire, which we got about 200 here and then 200 here as well or if casualties were actually casualties were healed so not entirely sure if that would um, calculate into it anyways let's go ahead and take a look at the one that inflicted the most damage and it looks like we got a winner here with 367 which was one unit there of the blue brigade it doesn't really tell if it's a uh, musket line or if it's a pike line but I imagine it probably is a musket line um, given the fact that they have just where do we have casualty sustained 23 so I would imagine that uh, otherwise we probably see some prisoners taken uh, for that brigade um, casualty sustained the highest number sustained would be a another blue brigade which I'm guessing is actually a pike formation so they lost about 200 men given that a, a formation is 250 leaves only 50 men alive uh, but they killed the, as many as they lost and yeah so I think this is it Hopefully, you enjoy this battle, and uh, I'm not entirely sure if we have any more s battles in this series, but if you have another battle series uh, that you want me to do, just go ahead and, and type it below. Um, I have done a lot of American Civil War for Empire, for Napoleon, and for Shogun too, so I've done a lot of those. Um, I was planning on doing with my American friend doing the American War of Revolution or the Revolutionary War. Um, there is also a number of 
maybe single battles I could do and, and mods and so on. So if you have any mods or anything, just go ahead and type it below. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, I, I I had a question. This is focusing on the Swedish period because someone wanted one that was focusing during the Bohemian period, uh, but this one was I I was focusing in on con or concentrating on the Swedish period um, to sort of limit it because there's a there it's 30 years and there's a lot of battles and stuff. So I li I limited down to the Swedish period. Um, Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's it. So, as I always say, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And hopefully, I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye.